In the poem, Distant Fields, Anzac Parade, the poet Gallagher captures and portrays the very atmosphere of the Anzac Parade, which is an annual Remembrance Day in Australia and New Zealand. Anzac parades began in 1916 to mark the first campaign of Australian troops in the First World War, fighting in Gallipoli. While the parade is a commemoration of pride and glory, Gallagher depicts a stirring and emotionally charged moment of sorrow and grief from the legacy of war. In the first stanza, the poet captures the glory and fanfare of the Anzac parade with the opening line, medaled, ribbon chests, an effort carried through them. The fact that the word, medal, is in a past tense verb form shows how the honor and pride of warfare have become part of the soldiers. It highlights the regalia of the parade and paints an ornamental and colorful scene with a celebrational atmosphere with honor. The earned medals and ribbons showcase their bravery and ability to stand out in the war. The soldiers have been able to bring honor, not only to themselves but to their countries as well and it is emphasized with the use of caesura. The commas create a slow, marching yet bold rhythm which hints at the tone of awe and respect. However, Gallagher quickly opposes the glory of war with the next line, an effort carried through them. Although the soldiers are participating in this parade, they are still reminiscent of the occurrences during the war. The noun, effort, also connotes determination, struggle and their actions over time which emphasizes how the medals are not only symbolic of bravery and ornamental but also showing the sacrifice of the soldiers to endure the hardship of war. In addition, the use of enjambment disrupts the rhythm and brings focus and the horror and life-lasting effect of war on the soldiers. The long-lasting of war is displayed again with the line, the war still going on inside their head. Through this, Gallagher directly shows that war is never over for them, despite this moment as a celebratory event for the ending of the war. The poet, therefore, shows that a huge part of the soldier's life, memories and identity has been deeply affected and altered by the years of service they gave to the country. Using the military term, up for roll call, at the fourth line, Gallagher suggests the call back to duty. The roll call is both nostalgic and sorrowful as it means that the parade represents an annual gathering to see the deceased and remain soldiers of the war. The soldiers here are remembering the key moments, their companions, the good and bad moments. In short, though they are present for and in this parade, their minds loiters into the past, bringing torrents of emotions and reminiscences. Next, in stanza 2, Gallagher utilizes a metaphor that compares the soldiers to flowers. Typically, flower is an astute symbol of the delicacy, beauty and innocence of youth which is contrasted with ash, as it represents ash of death, the biblical connotation of a person returning to being ash after death. Flowers are also normally being placed at the memorial in tribute and remembrance of the dead, in this case for the people who fought in the war. As the flowers had gone, Gallagher thus insinuates the idea of the flower which has burned into ash showing the ephemeral quality of human attention in the past war. The poet then concludes this stanza with, line after line after line, which describes how the soldiers walk in several rows, exhibiting order and discipline. The repetition of the word, line, denotes the indefatigable march of the soldiers who have a duty towards their country and countrymen, despite their individual sufferance. It also emphasizes the number of lives affected and made possible by the actions of the veterans. However, in their minds, they are experiencing ongoing chaos of thoughts and remembrances. For stanza 3 and 4, Gallagher moves on to a specific movement of the parade, where she turns to depicts a family occasion. The expression, grainy footage, is juxtaposed to, leafy street, indicating the audible presence of the soldiers, which refers to how they march and the coolness of the street, with the leaves flowing here and there. The phrase, grainy footage, suggests a detached and distant reality where the speaker is not truly engaged which highlights the nowadays detached past war and how the struggle and sacrifice of it are never mentioned. With the line, my father lifted me on to his shoulders to see. The poet clearly shows the speaker here as a child, who is accompanied by her father to look at the parade. The act of her father lifting her to see the entirety of the parade serves as a metaphor to show how the previous generation supports the new one. It is also a moment for her family to renew ties with their country and feed their patriotism. The moment is a loving one between parent and child, which the poet will cherish. Interestingly, the poet makes a contrasting analogy between her filial souvenir and the bloody remnants in the minds of the soldiers. Thus, the Anzac parade is equivalent to memories of different types, depending on the person going through his thoughts. 
The uncles follow the flag bearer with their eyes. He is the leader of the troop and he guides the soldiers in their march, stance and behavior. The heartbeat drum refers to life, as the heart is beating which highlights the atmosphere of honor along with liveliness as the Anzac parade is not an ordinary event but a moment of glory. Therefore the poet creates an ambience of honor along with the liveliness from auditory imagery. The Anzac parade is not a mundane occasion but a moment of glory. As the parade ends, the bugle which is a horn is sounded. It indicates that now life will resume its routine activities. The phrase, life unto life, indicates that life continues and suggests the cyclical structure that repeats to ensure prosperity and safety. Yet, it may also infer that the life of a soldier is memorable. War embossed experiences and characteristics which educates the individual to endure life in a more motivating way. Though there are losses involved, the soldier must not stagnate himself into psychological sufferings. Such memories must be waved off into bird light zone, i.e., must be taken as part and parcel of life. Moreover, the point of view of this poem is the first person perspective, and the intended audience is anyone, any reader looking to learn about Anzac Day, etc. The tone conveyed in this poem is sorrowful and faithful. One example in which the author's tone is presented is in lines 1 and 2 of stanza 2, where all the flowers had gone came a quiet of ash, line after line after line. This shows how the speaker and those around him, her are heartbroken and sorrowful, as they have grown quiet to remember those they have lost and to honor them. Another example where the poet's tone is presented is in lines 2 to 3 of stanza 5, where she says, Life unto life a single breath took flight into the bird light zone. This signifies how the speaker believes that there is everlasting life for these soldiers, which in turn gives the poem a faithful almost hopeful tone. The tone shifts towards the end of the poem with the volta in the last stanza. It starts with a sad and sorrowful tone as they are remembering the war, but ends off almost hopeful in believing that even though these soldiers are not living, their spirits are still around, they have everlasting life. The march is not only one of desolation, but it is combined with the significance of the army and courage displayed during wars. In contrast to the marching of the parade, at first, there seems to be a little regularity to this poem. Lines within stanzas differ in length, stanzas use different numbers of lines and there is no rhyme at any point in the poem. The irregularity highlights how war does not usually have a reason but leaves a huge impact on the ones who experience it. The only obvious semblances of regularity come in the opening and closing stanzas. In the first stanza, alternate lines share a syllable count and this may reflect that this is focused on the veterans themselves who continue to try to match the military rhythm but find the effort a strain. Whereas in the final stanza the three lines all use eight syllables and this unity reflects a final state of peace and order, as the soldiers ascend to heaven. In addition, the soldiers' efforts are depicted as a single breath, and thus these lines help reflect that unity. However, stanza three and stanza four seem to have a more cohesive regular syllabic structure. The third stanza takes us away from the parade and positions us with the poetic voice not seeing or understanding the significance of the parade. Thus the lines are much longer and disrupt any sense of a repetitive marching beat. However, interestingly this beat returns as the poetic voice seems to recognize both her father and uncle's respect for the soldiers and recognizing that this is not about the military, but it is about belief in the lead veteran's heart that lies behind his sacrifice. The use of caesuras in the opening stanza also causes the reader to reflect upon the achievements and nobility of the soldiers at first before challenging the same noble image by suggesting they have all been left damaged by their experiences in old age. In conclusion, Gallagher's poem portrays a generally sorrowful tone in regard to wartime. Even though there is a memorial parade occurring for the soldiers and veterans, both living and fallen, combat is still occurring inside the minds of these soldiers. Using personal observation and connection, Gallagher portrays war as an incredibly harmful event, not only for the soldiers but also their loved ones, with a melancholic use of imagery and tone through a young aged speaker's point of view. As time goes by. Mean myself, sir.